Hi, uh, today's topic is diving and dizziness. Um, the website that I run, uh, Diving Medicine QA, which is a uh, dive web. I have searched uh, how many questions and answers has there been going on. I found uh, 57 questions out of uh, near 2,000 questions, which means there's quite a few divers suffering from dizziness related to diving. And, uh, to talk about uh, diving and dizziness, I picked uh, some uh, topics like uh, types of dizziness, uh, function of inner ear, uh, dizziness during diving, and dizziness after diving. So what we should do to prevent or how can we manage the diving related dizziness. Uh, this post, poster, uh, some uh, senile divers might uh, remember. It's, uh, it's uh, from the movie called The Vertigo, uh, starring James Stewart and Kim Novak, uh, two of my favorite at that time. It was uh, Alfred Hitchcock's, uh, a very interesting movie. Uh, types of dizziness. This is something that really makes uh, uh, doctors taking care of dizzy patient. What is this? You know how bad it is. So vertigo, for me to see, is the the worst case of dizziness. It's a true whirling vertigo. You're not moving, but everything else around you is moving around. Unsteadiness sounds a little better and lightheadedness it usually accompany headache and then we have a general term like dizziness um, we have dizziness uh, of central origin which is you feel the dizziness from your brain or peripheral which is this uh, semicircular canal. Um, this, <coughs> excuse me, this inner ear, this part takes care of hearing, and these three semicircular canals, they take care of uh, the equilibrium balance. And inner ear, this cochlea semicircular canals meet at vestibule. So when you do the ear test, we oftentimes we call that uh, vestibular, vestibular function test. So anyway, uh, inner way, inner inner ear, take care of here again yeah, cochlea equilibrium at three semicircular canals and they unite at the vestibule. Why do we feel dizzy during diving? Um, probably the most common cause is seasickness. But usually you are sick even before you go in the water. So if you keep on feeling the same thing, it's seasickness. But, including myself, even if I feel a seasick before I jumped in, usually I feel okay on the water. And then I feel again when I come back out. Cold water can give some caloric test to your ear, which means we put some cold water in our ear, eardrum will feel the cold, and it is somehow transmitted to the middle ear and inner ear and inner ear fluid moves around. That's what we call caloric test. When the water is very cold, we feel dizzy because of that. Probably a tympanic membrane perforation. 
is doing the same thing. The cold water get into the middle ear and affect the inner ear function. Um, I wonder if I uh, have presented to you the orthonal baric vertigo, which you usually feel when you arise, I'm sorry, when you ascend, and the expanding air momentarily does not find its way um, outside, then the pressure will uh, stimulate the vestibule. So alternobaric vertigo is something you feel most of the time upon surface. It's about the change of pressure which is not being <clears throat> resolved. Around the window rupture. This comes when we uh, do the Varsarva too strong and the elevated intracranial pressure will affect the inner ear pressure and the pressure find its way out to, through the round window uh, membrane. At, in this case, the, the uh, perilymph uh, gets a fistula and we feel dizzy. We can also get this uh, benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. Uh, in other words, we call it the otholis, which means the stone of ear. Uh, we can also get this on the water, but it's extremely rare. But I have certainly uh, received many questions that I could not help but uh, judge the situation as PPPV. So this can also be a reason for a dizziness during diving. After diving, this makes everything much worse. Um, Maybe you are still under the influence of motion sickness, but it usually goes away very fast. Uh, if you have had a perilymph fistula, round window rupture, then you can have the hearing loss as well as dizziness post the dive. Uh, probably the worst thing is inner ear decompression sickness. You have to seek medical help immediately. Have to get uh, hyperbaric chamber therapy, ASAP. Uh, how can we prevent uh, the vertigo? Probably the first thing is you do not dive when you have uh, upper respiratory infection. To put it easy cold and probably the same thing but uh, if you have any difficulty in equalization you should not dive uh, there are other things like you have to stick to the no decompression limit you have to keep the center rate and you must have sufficient uh, surface interval time so that you don't get bent you don't feel dizzy uh, this is one of my favorite poster on diving. It's uh, diving is life. Everything else is just surface interval. Have enough surface interval. Uh, pretty soon, uh, I'm still taking surface interval for like four days. I need to go back. How do we manage? Uh, Dizziness is, whatever the cause is, dizziness is a serious uh, complication of diving. We must seek medical attention ASAP. Um, you can't wait to get it to, to see it go away. You better see it go away in the hospital. Um, you need to get uh, chamber therapy, if you can suspect the inner ear decompression sickness. Otherwise, it takes a very long time and can leave some uh, awful sequel. Uh, you may lose your hearing or whatever. So, there are some cystic pill before, and uh, probably uh, pretty soon I'll talk about this one, but you, you need to find the right choice. 
you need to find the right seasick pill that is best for you because it has uh, other complications as well. There are some uh, un other anti-vertigo medications uh, and then hyperbaric. So today I talked about uh, diving and dizziness and uh, what I can finally uh, re uh, re recommend to you is uh, stick to diving rule, don't ever get bent. And if you feel any vertigo or dizziness of this kind, seek medical attention ASAP. And uh, today's story was diving and dizziness and thank you very much for your attention.